Well, well, uh, first of all, thanks, uh, Phil, for uh, uh, helping us to uh, uh, promote World Vegan Day and by being the keynote speaker at this year's World Vegan Day. Very welcome. Uh, I thought I'd uh, ask you the, uh, a question that was uh, raised by the Governor General of Australia. He said that, uh, that Phil is someone that uh, normally avoids the, the, the publicity, the personal publicity, but is willing to step into the limelight uh, for a just cause. Uh, and what would you describe as a just cause? Well, in my experience, it's, a, it's essentially uh, the weak, the powerless, the disenfranchised, the abused, and those who are encaged, ultimately anyone who is bullied by anyone else who is in a position of power. And as it happens, a disproportionate amount of uh, the disenfranchised and bullied individuals in this world happen to be from the non-human animal kingdom. So much of my focus has gravitated there. Now, at the age of 34, you became vice president of Citibank. Now, how were you able to rise to such a uh, prominent position <laughs> so quickly? Um, I'd like to say it was all hard work and my, my great looks, but it was none of those things. Uh, I think uh, essentially being the right person at the right time and being willing to, to take chances, to be just a little bit game, I think that was perhaps um, uh, the thing that made the biggest difference for me. I took opportunities uh, when they rose and I wasn't particularly frightened of, of risk, um, I guess. Uh, I think um, I remember someone once saying for, for every man or woman who is just a little bit game, there are a million who would step aside to let him prove it. And I'm living proof of that. I just uh, stood up before anyone else. Yeah, that's great. Now, I know that at the age of 40, you decided to turn your back on all that. And, uh, yes. and, and now you've gone from that to having something like 500 uh, uh, projects uh, over 40 countries, you know, that uh, cover all sorts of things like helping uh, children and the underprivileged and animals and, and the environment. Can you, True. Can you explain uh, what was the turning point for you? I think that in my case, there was no cathartic moment. There was no St. Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, uh, things sort of evolved. I had, an, had a background of, of living very close to, to wild animals and spending a lot of time in the jungle. But if there was a tipping point, to use such a term, um, in my 30s as a merchant banker I was mandated to do an advisory assignment for a large conglomerate. And I went to have a look at all their operations in various industries. And one industry I did go to have a look at turned out to be a slaughterhouse. I've got to tell you, that frightened the living daylights out of me. It changed me profoundly uh, in very fundamental ways. It certainly, I think, made me a, a better man, but it certainly made me a compassionate man. And I have to say that I agree entirely. I think it was Paul McCartney who said that if slaughterhouses had glass walls, no one would ever eat an animal again. And let's face it, what are we eating? We're eating, eating the the rotting carcass of a murder victim. So let's not dress it up. And once that penny dropped, I think that was my, uh, my cathartic moment, if you like. So I've, um, I've been vegan ever since, and uh, I could never, ever go back to, to being otherwise. Mm. Now, I've heard you uh, in uh, some of your talks before uh, mention the word ahimsma, uh, and I was just wondering what uh, that means to you and how it uh, applies to our society. Indeed. Um, the word ahimsa actually comes from uh, the Upanishads. I think it's the most beautiful word ever written in any language in human history. Um, it was written about um, 8,000 years ago, and it's the cornerstone of religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. And essentially it means non-violence to any living being. Fairly fundamental, and that e uh, ethos feeds through into all the Abrahamite uh, religions as well. Uh, but I don't think any single word captures the notion quite as well as ahimsa. So uh, I think um, it's become my sort of way of life ever since. And it's not just in what you do, it's what you say and also in what you think. And I think if your thoughts and your words and your actions are non-violent, you'll have a profoundly different type of life than other people would who, who don't espouse those, those qualities. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Now, now recently the live export issue has been getting a lot of publicity. Uh, what do you think that uh, the value of that has been and uh, how is that uh, going to affect the treatment of animals? I think the campaign run by Animals Australia has been terrific. Um, I think it will have a profound impact on, on the way in which the Australian community sees animals. Um, I made a comment to a friend the other day. Um, it reminded me very much of Alexander Solzhenitsyn when he wrote the Gulag Archipelagos about Siberia. Nobody realised at the time, but just a couple of decades later, the, the whole fabric of the USSR was dismantled and uh, the way of life and the way in which uh, they saw themselves changed. I think in time we will actually change the way we see ourselves, particularly after seeing uh, what happened in Indonesia. Uh, but let's bear in mind, uh, I also put up a fair bit of money to, uh, to try and train the butchers in the Basatine slaughterhouse in Egypt to treat our Australian animals humanely, having seen them stab out the eyes and slash the tendons of these poor animals. I have to tell you, every penny we spent was utterly wasted. So those two, that, that industry has gone way past its use, use by date and it's an absolute disgrace that a civilized country like Australia sis, but still persists in this madness. Now recently there's been a lot of uh, controversy about the carbon tax. It's, it seems almost on a daily basis that uh, the media is uh, you know, talking about that and debating that. Uh, but uh, one of the biggest uh, causes of uh, this environmental damage uh, is animal industries and yet it gets very little uh, airplay. Well, why do you think that is? I think Mark Twain got it right. He said, never get between a man and his wallet. And uh, uh, sadly, uh, uh, the livestock industry is a, is a very powerful force in this country. And in Australia, we are besieged by kind of dog whistle politics. Uh, our politicians are actually controlled by the lobbyists of these vile and hideous industries. And uh, uh, it's a term I've been using a lot recently, and it seems to be getting some currency. I call them the animal industrial complexes. It's like the, the military complex. Um, they are actually significant blots on our national character and our culture. And the sooner this is erased from our corporate memory, the better. It's got to go. My only regret is that it's taken so long. Now, uh, what uh, subjects or topics do you believe that uh, we as Australians should be discussing and debating right now? That's a very good question. I think they should be the topics that we should have been discussing for decades in the past. Ideas such as ethics and compassion, responsibility, fair play, responsibility to ourselves, our families and to each other, to our country and to the planet. These things should just roll off our tongue. They should be part of, of the fabric of our lives. Unfortunately, as I say, it's dog whistle politics and we run a popularity contest every year for no earthly reason when we should be dealing up with matters that really do count. And this is one of them. Um, this year you, um, avoid, uh, you awarded the 2011 Kindness Trust Medal to T. Colin Campbell. Yes. And uh, he follows on from uh, previous winners such as uh, Ian Gawler, uh, Jane uh, Goodall and uh, Paul Watson. What inspired you to set up that uh, award? And, and what was it about T. Colin Campbell's work that impressed you the most? That's, that's a very interesting question too. Um, this award has been granted to a, a number of very notable people over the years, the last 10 years or so. And nowadays we're even having people that in, in huge institutions all around the world lobbying us to actually to receive the award. Um, but uh, this year it went to, to Colin uh, because of the sterling effort he has put into the idea of, of veganism. Now, Colin is actually an educator. Uh, he's not an animal rights activist, as indeed I am. He deals with the science. Now, um, the animal rights people have already won the important arguments like uh, greenhouse gas emissions, for example, animal cruelty, the profligate waste of water, the damage to our forests, the oceans, um, our mountains. We've won that, that debate, hands down. That game is over. The only stone left unturned right now is the idea of human health. And people like Colin um, and PCRM, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medals, Medicine, and a whole lot of great elite athletes, they've already beaten that argument to death. 
but Colin has done it in a very elegant way and th this train is gathering momentum. I think it's about time everyone got on board because once this thing hits max speed there'll be no stopping it. The game will be over. Uh, the result is already in. We've won the, we've won the game. These are just the, the opposition we face today is just the death rattle of a, a vile and vicious industry that just refuses to die. But die it will and die it must. So what advice would you give animal activists? Well, first of all, do not be afraid. You are on the winning side of history. I would say that uh, veganism is the only game in town. It's the pathway, if you like, to a truly authentic life. I like to see veganism, in fact, as a magic bullet. It actually addresses and cures all our ills. Um, solves the problem of our environment, our water resources, the rivers, the oceans, the dead zones, and most of all, our ethics and animal suffering. I also like to think of veganism as being the Swiss Army life, knife, I mean, of, uh, because it provides us so, with such a range of solutions to so many problems. So um, I would tell every um, activist not to despair. Um, one of the things I do like watching is that commercial that the Victorian government put on. If you drink and drive, you're a bloody idiot. And I've changed it to say that if you're not a vegan, you're a bloody vandal. So um, I would say to them, uh, um, we're winning. Just remember the, the basic rules that, of Gandhi. And first, they laugh at you. Then they ignore you. Then they fight you. And then you win. We're going to win. It's just a matter of time. And we've got the time on our hands right now. Now, this year you're going to be the keynote speaker of World Vegan Day. What message uh, have you got for vegans? I guess it's the, it's the same one. Uh, work together. There is strength in numbers, but there's strength in being, in being organized. Unfortunately, people in, in this particular space have been highly balkanized. And this balkanization has actually been exploited by the industry. It's time we started working together, pooling our resources, and that's what we've tried to do. We don't get involved with, with the petty little politics of little NGOs around the world. We sort of stand apart and above it all. So I would say to every activist, push the vegan message. Make animal cruelty your most important priority. You know, in human history, only 100 billion human beings have ever lived. And yet we torture and we kill 3 billion sentient living beings every week. Now that is a crime of unimaginable proportions. So keep the faith. Don't give up. We're going to win. And finally, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, I would say, apart from what I, I just uh, commented on, apart from becoming vegan yourself, I know a lot of you are already compassionate vegans. I'd urge you all to become active vegans. Become evan evangelical about it. Get out in the street, wear it on your t-shirt, wear it proudly. Because you are the ones who are living a truly authentic life. And I think the nation owes a debt of gratitude to people who promote and understand and educate others on the vegan cause. Because I don't think there is a more important issue on our plate today than veganism. And I hope this uh, catches on in a very, very big way. Well, thanks very much for your time, Phil. I know you've got a very, bu a very busy schedule today, and I really appreciate uh, the words that you've shared with it's us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Mark.